One of our big stories is the fall of the Arab Spring in Egypt. President uh, Morsi is reportedly under house arrest following a military overthrow. Millions celebrated, fireworks lit the skies, and the army, the army announced it was installing Egypt's chief justice as interim leader. So here with some background and insight into the crisis, Alex Holstein. He's an international affairs expert at geopoliticalmonitor.com. I didn't think this would happen this fast. Where no. are you? It, well, it's rather smooth, isn't it? I mean, uh, in fact, a little bit smoother la than last time. This is sort of Arab Spring 2, I would say, in, in Egypt, and they're, they're taking another shot at it because I think that President Morsi didn't live up to expectations either for the people and certainly not for the army, who sort of are the, are the caretakers of, of, of situations such as these. So, um, you know, very smooth, uh, relatively peaceful, could be a lot worse. I mean, Egypt could be Syria right now if things had gone the wrong way last time around, which is why we can have a little bit of faith in the army that they're going to do the right thing and, and uh, facilitate a, a constitutional uh, transition. In fact, that's exactly where it seems to be leading. Uh, look at the people that uh, General al-Sisi al uh, surrounded himself with the other day, very uh, broad uh, spectrum of uh, uh, political and cleric, uh, clerical heavyweights, religious heavyweights uh, from the various uh, coalition, uh, various uh, wings of the coalition, factions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it looks like, um, I, I, you know, they put the head of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Constitutional Court. As Who's a Morsi head. guy? Yeah, who's a Morsi guy. Um, and then they have uh, the interim council as well. So I think it's actually going to be smoother than it was even last time where things were kind of much more up in the air after the removal of Hosni Mubarak. They had no idea really what was going to happen, no constitution in place. I think, I think this is going to be a much smoother transition. The question is whether do, do we get Arab Spring 3 in two years when the economy isn't, isn't rejuvenated or, or doesn't come back into uh, a positive uh, sort of uh, up, up, upswing. That was the key. Yeah. The economy not improving. Had the economy improved, everybody said, oh, Morsi's doing his job. We'll give him all the dictatorial rights he needs. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, th I, I think so. I mean, I think it would be much easier for Morsi to stay in power if everyone had bread on the table and was, was fat and happy, but they're, but they're hungry and they're, and they're upset and grumpy. So uh, that this is what, this is what can happen. Now, I, I think the United States reaction is, is rather interesting. I, I found it incredibly uh, sort of ironic to some degree that uh, the uh, White House uh, statement on the Morsi speech itself was that their one criticism was that he was short on specifics. I guess when you live in a, in a house with uh, bulletproof polycarbonate windows, uh, you can get away with throwing stones that big. But uh, so they kind of let that one, uh, I think, was a, I think that was a bit hypocritical. But at the same time, uh, um, President Obama also said that he, he regretted the or he was uh, saddened by the military's decision uh, to uh, remove uh, President Morsi. And I and I and I don't understand uh, why they would think it was the military's decision when uh, General Al, Al Sisi was surrounded by such a a broad uh, a spectrum coalition. Yeah, but they were the ones who enforced it. And, and, and I mean, the United States can't uh, come out anti-democracy. They no. can't give a message like that. No, and I and I and I agree with that. But I don't see it as a military decision when you have a revolution. Was it a military decision when when the when when Boris Yeltsin was backed by the military in the in the Soviet coup? I mean, based in in the Moscow coup of 1991. But that was a persona backed by the military. This is the military acting and then installing their own guy. The military person they acting, dictate. perhaps in reaction, though, to the to the mass protests in the Square. Yeah. Absolutely. So, same thing in Moscow. The the military at first was ordered into into Moscow by the by the uh, the the hard hardliners, and then switched sides when they saw which way the the winds were shifting. With seventy thousand Muscovites, seventy thousand out of ten million. I'd be interested to, to note how many actually were into here Square for this out of the entire city population of, of Cairo, because I mean, it's probably a much smaller number than one would think. So yeah, is it a coup d'etat? Is it a revolution? Or is it a small revolution, big revolution? We have to, these are things that they're academics They're careful not decide. to call it a coup because then they don't get any money from the United States. Right. They're, they're pretty smart, these guys. Would they have had discussions in advance with the United States, possibly. I mean, they might have. They might have put feelers out to some degree. Uh, they might have done so uh, through back channels. They might have done so uh, surreptitiously, uh, without the United States realizing that they were being felt out through through contacts that the United States believed were on one side or another. Um, this could have. This could have all taken place certainly. And yes, they are very smart and very clever and uh, and, and 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 very uh, educated in their decision making. Uh, I think they look at the rest of the Arab world and say, we don't want. Syria, 
We don't right. want that situation. So I think they're going to do everything in their power to keep things stable. I think that the Egyptian military, that I just heard on the radio on the way in that, that they overflew uh, the city with, uh, with Cairo with uh, jets, and they uh, let out vapor trail that formed a heart. So saying to the people, we're with you, you know, don't, don't worry. We, we love you. Kind of yeah, thing. we love you, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we love Egypt, and we're going to keep it as stable as possible. How quickly do we see elections? Oh, I, I think that remains to be seen, but I, probably more quickly than last time. I mean, the, all the, all the uh, levers are in place for it, and they're moving towards that rather quickly. Will there be a reaction against the Muslim Brotherhood, especially in the rural areas, or for the Muslim Brotherhood? Rural areas, I think I, I, that I'm not sure about, but I think in the urban areas for sure there'll be a reaction against, and re reaction or not, it looks like they've got lists of, uh, to arrest many of them, so I, I think the Muslim Brotherhood is going to be uh, hobbled to a large degree out of this uh, situation. Except that they've got a history of kind of hiding anyway, so they're, they're used to that. That's the norm for the Muslim Brotherhood. Right, and this is what I'm wondering, is Al are the former members of Egyptian Islamic Jihad who folded into Al-Qaeda at the beginning of Al-Qaeda, when Al-Qaeda was birthed, uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri, the leader of Al-Qaeda, is formerly the head of Egyptian Islamic Jihad, merged that organization, Al-Qaeda. Most of Al-Qaeda core, the original Al-Qaeda, was Egyptian Islamic Jihad. Will they, will they go back to Cairo and start ramping things up there, uh, taking advantage of the weakness of a transition to cause trouble? Ooh, I hate that kind of news when that comes out. Could happen. Alex, that's why we have you here. Thank those you guys very much. Insights. Alex Holstein is an international affairs expert at geopoliticalmonitor.com.